Good day everyone, Matt Elder of MattElder.com and in this video we're going to look at the LEGO Scenario gears, wheels and tyres, name and possible future direction. This is the third video in a series and be sure to check out MattElder.com forward slash scenario for all your LEGO Scenario resources. So let's get started. This is a Family Bricks video. Be sure to hit that like button, share and if you want to be super awesome, subscribe. Click the bell and select all to be notified of new videos as they're uploaded. Gears. Quickly wanted to touch upon gears. In the London module, it is effectively a single axle that runs through all the wheels. It's actually made up of two Technic axles with a connector, as you need at least a 17 length long to come out the back, so you can have somewhere to put a handle onto. If you didn't mind the overhang out the back or somewhere, you could just use a 32 long Technic axle. This can be manually turned by hand if you didn't have any motors. If the speed seems a little fast, you can change this configuration on the back. Here I've replaced this steering wheel with a gear system and the basic way is to slow it down. So as you can see now, I'm turning quite vigorously and the wheel speed is much, much slower. And the reason for this is you have these gears here to slow it down. And the main way that it works is you have a little gear turning a big gear, which then comes through to a little gear, which then turns another big gear, which comes through to a little gear, which turns another big gear. And that's how that mechanic works to slow it down. Just for illustration purposes, I've taken the billboard off, which would yeah, just sit straight in there. So it's relatively easy to change these over, but just shows how, you know, with a relatively simple modification, you can start controlling the speed and in either directions. Here I've built a pretty basic sort of Technic tower for a motor. All it really is, is one of these square ones here as a base, have a few lift arms going straight up. This is really important as a cross brace as it stops it from wriggling from side to side. These are just a couple of Technic 1x6s with holes in it and then a motor sitting on top and depending upon the size of the motor you're using here I've just used a couple of 2x6s to give it a little bit of additional height. So you literally just take the crank handle off there. I've got that around backwards. Motor sits in there. Plug that into there. Just make sure that's all nice and aligned and then turn it on. I have one of these older style nine volt railway controllers and as you can see there, I've only just turned it just a little tiny bit. So you're not giving the motor much power, but it's giving it a nice speed. On video, this might look a little slow just because of relative sizes and the way that video skews thing. But if you turn it up, or if you turn it the other way. So that's the main idea with this one. You just have a single axle through there onto a hand crank. That can really be good just to get you going. And then after that, you can make some modifications to then put a motor or another hand crank on it to slow it down if you need to. The only thing to note is that because you're using a combination of Technic bricks and lift arms it takes a number of holes for the alignment to match up because they're not quite hundred percent the same they're slightly different just another angle to give you an idea of that gear system you can see this gear is moving really fast and then by the time you get down to here it moves quite slowly and you can also feel the resistance like that's fine to turn this one here you can turn by hand, this one here you can kind of, but you're really feeling resistance. But by the time you get down to this one, it's really wedged in there and you can sort of see just the top one here is only moving ever so slightly. Next up is the wave setup and I'll just take this apart so you can get a better look at what's happening inside it. Okay, at the bottom you have the two main drive axles. And on all the axles at the bottom, you have the same Technic wedge belt wheel on that side. And then also on this side, you can see the orange one there and then a gray one in the back. So down the bottom is all the same and you get the different wheel speeds by the different size pulleys you have at the top here. This is done with elastic bands 
you can sort of see in here, there's the black one there, just trying to get the glare. There's a black one there coming off the orange wheel, I'm trying to turn and see. And then on this side here, you got another two of the black ones. You can see the, the one in the, the front, not the one clearly at the back. Which then those elastic bands or rubber bands come up to, there's a drive wheel there, one there, and then one there. Here you have the Technic Steering Pulley Large, and then in here you've got the clear Technic Wedge Belt Wheel, and then as you come over to this other one here, it's a smaller motor, 9 volt micro motor pulley. So you have a large wheel here, a medium sized one here, and a small one there, and that what, what gives the differing speeds as it's going through based upon how I'm actually turning it on at the back. And that's what gives you the differing speeds. So you have the small one at the front, so this wheel goes the fastest, then this one here, medium size, so it goes the medium speed, and then the one at the back is the largest wheel, so it goes the slowest. So there's lots of flexibility in here. If you want a different configurations, all you really need to do is just move around the size of these wheels. So you could have three of the same to have the same speed, or if you put the big one at the front and the little one at the back, then the front one here would go the fastest and then that would go the slowest or however you want to do it. So it's really flexible in that way. And then to get the two different directions, one turns one way, one turns the other. So depending upon which direction you want, all you really need to do is just move the pulleys at the bottom from either side and swap them over or however the configuration you would want to do. So it's really flexible like that. The one thing I don't like about it, however, is you've got the rubber bands in there, which if you leave them, then over time they're going to stretch and it's just going to wear out a little bit. Although it might look like there's a single axle running through it, there isn't. To get the independent directions, you've actually got three separate axles, which means on these Technic bricks here, each sits in half. So this little axle here will sit into half of this brick, and then this axle here sits into there by half a brick and the same there. So it's not ideal. And that's why you need these support pieces here, because if you don't have them here, once you put those rubber bands on, it's only hanging in by half an axle, so it can really easily pull it straight out. It's not ideal, but just given the 16 by 16 configuration limitation and trying to get three of these wheels in there, that seemed to be the best solution. Now onto the Star Wars action box. With the Star Wars one, I think it'll just be simpler to take part of it apart, take the side off so you can actually see what's happening in here. What you in essence have is a single axle which runs all the way through. So this is a 16 axle and there's a connector there, just there. So this is a, a three going into there. So with that single axle, so we'll drive there. You, you turn that, it's relatively stiff and you need a lot of torque. And with that single axle, you can see that two of the wheels go one direction and the other one goes the other way. And the way that that is achieved is if we come around to the side, you can see the f these two have the green wheel rims in there whereas this one actually doesn't have a rim. What you're seeing in there, and I know it's hard because there's not a great deal of space, what's in there is a custom-built gear unit. So you've got the, the tan one which sits on the axle which provides the drive, and then you've got some small thin lift arms, and next to it on the top, the bottom, and the two sides are actually connected to that tan gear is small little black ones. So this wheel actually sits on all those gears and by the gears turning that then drives the center wheel which is why it needs a fair amount of torque because it's literally turning the rubber on itself. To do that it needs some resistance because otherwise it has nothing to turn against which is why you have a horizontal lift arm across there and then it comes down to this here to connect to the, the base which then provides that resistance. That's why when you look at this DOTS bracelet, it's all the way as far as possible off the wheel, because otherwise these Star Destroyers being larger size will come down and hit these in there. So that's a bit more of a complicated gear setup, but it's the way that you can have a single axle with wheels turning in alternating directions. 
And again, you could play with that configuration. So maybe you have this gear set up at one end so that you can have two going in one direction, one in the other one, depending upon what you want to do. So these are the three different wheel sizes we've used in these different LEGO scenario setups, depending upon what you might have available to you. So this is a 49.5 by 20, which means the diameter is 45 and the thickness is 20, which was used on that one. Then we have a 56 by 26, which was used on that one. And then this is a 56 by 28 ZR. Quickly wrap the dots bracelet bands around each of the three wheels. So that is the dots bracelets applied to the wheels. Now on the smaller wheel, the 49.5, You've got to go into the second hole, so there's another hole that you can adjust into there, and you can see that is a bit loose. So that's the problem we've had with this one, is that these wheels in there, they do slide around a little bit. And in here I've got a 1x3 tile which goes across and joins those two together. So it's a way of being able to fix them relative to one another. But the other ones you know you, you can sort of see there a little bit they've got plenty of given movement and it does mean that over time sometimes they do the bracelets slide this way and then that starts just giving you a little bit of grief and problems with hitting the upper structure as they turn around that said i've just tried it if you put it into the third notch like so you can actually get that to slide over that wheel and it's really tight. So a new discovery and probably just go back and tighten all those bands so they don't slip around as much. So that might actually work out quite well. With the 56 wheels, they actually fit on really snugly and it's on the last band there. And I've never had any problems with these ones with them slipping around and that. So you can use either with the Star Wars one where the middle gear turns independently of the others you actually need a lot of clearance and room in the middle to be able to achieve that which generally you can only do with these 56 by 28 ZRs there are other 56s so if you compare these two 56s the internal doesn't have much space where that rim is sitting there are other 56s like this but they've got a much thicker wall and they won't work and that's the problem with these ones. These 56 by 28 ZRs are actually only in a few sets and a little more difficult to come by. So that just gives you a few different options of wheels that you might have in your own collections and some of the pros and cons with using each one. I find the process to the scenario building to be a lot like art and an art form. You're trying stuff, assessing it, removing or adding and then continuing. You're always making little judgments of how things look relative to one another. And it can also be a redactive process because originally I had some trees for this one which were done in a sand green to give variety as what it would be in real life. But I found because the sand green is more of a desaturated color, it was throwing the color palette off because most of the colors here are quite vibrant and heavily saturated. And then once we took that tree off, it all then felt like it was starting to come back together again. And even doing the waveform, initially trying it with square one by one tiles, it wasn't giving a good effect. It was blocky. So then coming back using the quarter circles and then originally trying the blue with the finishing being in tiles, it didn't quite look right. So then came back and then tried the round circle pieces on it. And it's that constant back and forth. And even on the wheels, the front is a transparent light blue round stud, whereas in the back, you can't really see it, but then there's the square block blue colors, so it comes more like what's happening with the wave on the back form billboard. And even with the Death Star planet shape, just playing around with the different tans and light and darks and the light combinations here. And even for the cloud scene here, the black tiles, the one by ones, were originally a dark bluish gray, but then the characters were getting lost in that. And and even though it's not showing up on camera, the black actually works much better in person. And it helps when it's turning around when you have the transition from the Death Star into the Cloud City room. As a process, feel very much it's the less is more approach. How do I represent complex detail with not very much? And that seems to be the challenge with this micro scale building. And it forces you, particularly with the billboards, where even with the rotating one there, 
you only have a total of 30 studs across and 16 studs down to do whatever picture it is and then you're only seeing parts of it at any one given time even with doing a 16 by 16 flat plate like that you still only have 16 by 16 tiles to play around with scenario name as for the name scenario there's a reason for it in around 2005 give or take a year Sid Mead released DVDs on his illustration technique and there was these four DVDs here done by the Noman workshop you can probably go through and download these as digital downloads these days but what was really fascinating was actually listening to the commentary on this Sid paints in gouache which is opaque watercolor and he had been doing since the late 50s and his work is highly revered talk to any conceptual artist or designer and things like that and they all know this guy and refer to his works often if you go to his website you can see his original film credits include the original star trek notes and picture blade runner tron short circuit aliens time cop and so forth and for something like tron he was the one who actually designed the light cycles that you can see here but it was his illustration which really set him apart he did illustrations for this US Steel series in the early 60s I believe and they're just so light and vibrant and full of life and the story goes that when he decided to do his own book and self-publish the amount of money that he made off that was equivalent to multiple years of his annual salary so getting back to the DVDs, Sid would consider everything which apart from his technical skill I think he made his pictures so compelling Here's just a quick Google search of some of his images. And on the DVDs, he was talking about scenario. He would think about everything that was happening in the scene, all the designs, what was the backstories, the mechanics for making cars and vehicles fly. So everything was really well considered. And I think that comes through in his work. So things had a reason for being there rather than just looking cool. So the DVD commentary was fascinating to get an insight into his thought process and he was always talking about the concept of scenario. So I just thought it fitted well into this idea because you're creating little scenes using a variety of methodologies and techniques and it just makes the most sense. And within that you're creating your own little narrative you know that going back to that original idea of it being like a lego snow globe or diorama and thinking of all the different elements that go into the scene or the different aspects and building techniques and story that you're trying to put through to whoever might be viewing the object and as an additional little tidbit Sid Mead was actually at the same design school as another guy within a year called Ralph McCurry now most people will have no idea who this is but you definitely know his work because he was the original concept artist on the Star Wars films and this is all of his work so he came up with you know the Darth Vader designs and he was painting in the same gouache sort of style and we all know from there everything that spawned and it's nice coming that full circle link coming back given that one of the scenarios initially created is one of the Star Wars ones I was also fortunate enough that Sid Mead in 2010 came to Australia and he did some talks which was able to go along to and it was just great to be able to just hear him speak and his ideas and approaches to things. So it's a nice segue from the visual futurist to talk about the future direction of the Lego scenario. Future direction. In the future I plan to release videos that give breakdowns, time lapses, tutorials and possibly instructions would be great to see others pick up the ideas and what people come up with. Hoping others can see and know of ways to improve and make this better. I'm not a technic guru. I know enough to get things working and to get by. Sure, experts looking on in horror as do some things which are clunky when there are much more elegant ways of doing things. Visit mattelder.com forward slash scenario for all your Lego scenario resources. It's a bit bare bones at the time of recording, but we'll be populating it with more content moving forwards. As for where this could head, I have many different ideas. I can see this as being really collaborative, someone working on the bracelets, someone else working on the mosaics, etc. Alternatively, pick a movie and each does a scene, or a trilogy and each does a film. Something where the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. We plan to submit this to the LEGO Ideas site for consideration to become a future set. So if there is a link around this video, it would be fantastic if you can give it a vote over there. We can really see it as a canvas or a platform for a whole line of sets, which has scenes and storytelling inbuilt into it. LEGO could have base modular models and structure. 
Then they could sell different scene packs to theme them out and finalize a scenario. So the base might be Star Wars with Obi-Wan versus Darth Vader. The second pack might be Empire Strikes Back with Luke fighting Vader and the Hoth battle scene. The third pack might be Return of the Jedi and the Sarlacc pit with Luke fighting Boba Fett. Next obvious step is to add lights and sounds. Maybe create a programmable Bluetooth speaker that could sit within the model. Through an associated app you could record dialogue and have triggers. While I've been using the dots bracelet wrapped around a wheel, I don't think it would be too much for LEGO to make a wheel with studs similar to this one. can see it being really useful and having a full 360 degree ability to stud. Pretty sure the GBC community will pick up bracelets in some way, shape or form and really curious to see what they come up with. For mine, I'd also really like to see the dots bracelet made in white. It would give the greatest contrast and really make the tiles and the dots designs sing. Would also be good to have the dots bracelets in a red or orange or a traditionally saturated warm Lego color. The Lego scenarios also lend themselves to social media, pictures and movie clips. So if you do come up with a Lego scenario model, be sure to use the hashtag Lego scenario and we'll look to put links on the scenario page and in the social media accounts to feature your Lego scenario creations. Congratulations on making it this far into this video. That is a real accomplishment. Leave a smiley and sad face in the comment and I'll know you got this far into the club. What are your thoughts? Are you inspired to create any of your own Lego scenarios? Let us know in the comments below and I respond to all of them. This is a Family Bricks video. Be sure to hit that like button, share, and if you want to be super awesome, subscribe. Click the bell and select all to be notified of new videos as they're uploaded. Thanks very much for watching. Here are some other videos you might find of interest. And until next time, when we talk about all things LEGO.